Hey, good morning. Welcome back to this week's Word. I'm Pastor Jody, First Baptist Church, Kaiser, West Virginia. You know, as uh, I sat here this morning, you know, just gathering my thoughts and praying for the people of Afghanistan. I, I can't believe what's taking place in Afghanistan. Actually, I can't believe what our country is doing to those that are stranded in Afghanistan. Right now, we are tear gassing our own people as the reports are coming out. I pray that that's wrong, but it, I don't believe that it is. We're tear gassing our own people to drive them away from the airport. And we're saying that it's for their own safety because the Taliban's coming down uh, to maybe take their lives. But we're driving them away from the one place that they feel secure, one place that they have hope, and that is to get on a plane and go to another nation that they will be protected in. And right now, it seems as if our government is driving them away. And it just really truly breaks my heart. And I'm, I'm praying for the people that are stranded there in Afghanistan. I'm praying for our missionaries, our brothers and sisters in Christ, who have been putting their life on the line in order to, to get out the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that they're able to get out by some other means. And I praise God today for private sectors um, I mentioned, you know, I don't mention a whole lot of people on here, but I will mention Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck, from what I understand, and he's over in the Middle East right now, and he is uh, dispatching planes. He's doing his best to get as many people out of Afghanistan as he possibly can. Many of you have tied into that ministry that's taking place, and I uh, thank you for that, and I praise God for the funds that are coming in in order to get these people out. But we do, have, we do have private sectors who are stepping up and, and trying to help the people of Afghanistan, help the American citizens that are stranded there, when it seems like our own government won't do it. But there is hope today. There is hope of life today. And it's only found in God. It's only found in God's Word through His Son, Jesus Christ. And I want to share with you today the choice is actually ours that we can either choose life or we can choose death today spiritually we could choose life or we could choose death today by simply trusting in the Lord or not trusting in the Lord last week we talked about Proverbs chapter 3 especially in verse 5 and verse 6 where we were told to trust in the Lord our God trust in his wisdom trust in his understanding leaning not on our own wisdom and understanding because in this flesh dwells no good thing. So we want to trust in the Lord unto salvation. So there's hope for those people in Afghanistan spiritually. They could surrender their hearts to Jesus Christ. And their names will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And they will be in eternity with Jesus Christ. And all the people that have gone on before for all eternity. There's hope for you and I to join them there today. God gave Israel a warning in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and this is what he says in the first two verses he says now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all of his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord our God when we obey the voice of the Lord our God, life comes in. Blessings come in. He goes on down in that same chapter and says that cursed you will be if you do not follow my commandments, that you will not keep my, my statutes, my laws. Cursed you will be. We're also told in God's holy word that he blesses though. He told Abraham, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. He was talking about Abraham, but he was talking about the nation of Israel. Right now, the United States of America is walking away from Israel. I just got news this morning that Parliament came out and says that the United States of America has lost all credibility with their nation. That's a scary, scary thing. We have ambassadors from around the world who, who are saying similar things. Israel, our, one of our strongest allies, 
is now questioning our commitment to them. Remember God's word. Remember what he spoke to Abraham. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. The United States of America has been blessed for a long time. Why? Because we stood with the nation of Israel. I know that there are people who are protesting against Israel, even in the, in the streets of our, some of our major cities. I saw it firsthand in Philadelphia a few years back, people gathering together, protesting against Israel. But God's word says that we are to pray for the peace of Israel. And if we don't do that, we won't receive that life that God promised. Blessed you shall be. Blessed you shall be if you keep my commandments. You follow my laws. You obey my statutes. Blessed you will be. I pray right now that the church in America is praying for the peace of Israel and praying for our brothers and sisters who are in Afghanistan stranded right now. But there is a choice for us here today. We can either choose life or we can choose death. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 11 through 14 says this, For this commandment which I command you today, it's not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It's not in heaven that you should say, who, who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near you. It's in your mouth, it's in your heart, that you may do it. Here in America, we all want, we want the best life possible. The best, the best life possible is only found through Jesus Christ and His salvation. Blessed you will be if you keep these commandments. This is something the Apostle Paul alluded to in Romans chapter 10 in verses 6 through 10. Oh, actually, I'm going to start in verse 5. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law, which is something I just read you in Deuteronomy chapter 30. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will send into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth, it's in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is what we call the sinner's prayer. This is life. That if we choose to confess with our mouth what we believe in our heart, that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, we shall have life. That's why Moses said, and that's why Paul, the Apostle Paul was saying, it's near you, it's in your mouth, it's in you. We have the ability, because of the work of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, to receive salvation, to receive life. I pray today in America that you are receiving the life that God has for you and as to be a born-again follower of Jesus Christ. Because if you're not, then you will be choosing death. John chapter 14 verse 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And what is the commandment of God? That we keep His word. That we keep His commandments. All ten of them. We keep His statutes. And we follow His will. This is God's will for our life that we might experience life. We're going down in, in chapter 30 of Deuteronomy. I'm starting in verse 15. He says, See that I've set before you today life and, and good, death and evil, and that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, to keep all of His commandments, His statutes and His judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. This was God's promise to the nation of Israel, that if they would love the Lord their God with everything that they are, then He would bless them that he would bless them and they would go in and possess the land that he was giving them. 
In the same manner, the Lord told us that if we would love Him with all of our heart, to love His Son with all of our heart, and we would confess our sins, that He would forgive our sins, and by the blood of Jesus Christ, He would save us from all those sins, and we would be accepted in the Beloved. I pray today that you are giving your whole heart to Jesus Christ, that you're choosing life today. Verse 17 says, But but if your heart turns away <clears throat> so that you do not hear <clears throat> and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce, announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and and your descendants might live. It goes on to say in verse 20, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey His voice, and that you may cling to Him, for He is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give to them. I know today that there are brothers and sisters who are in Afghanistan. They're clinging to the Word of God right now. They're clinging to life. Here in America, we can put it out of sight, out of mind if we want to. We don't have to think about life and death because we think that we're full of life because we live in the land of the free. But if this could happen in 11 days in Afghanistan, it certainly could happen in four years here in America. Christians... I want to warn you today, don't look at Afghanistan and the believers that are suffering there like it could never happen here. I believe it's already begun here. Just the other day I read a news article that reported on a major college right down here in Virginia, not too far from us, that was, that was telling their freshmen at orientation that if you are a Christian, then you're an, an oppressor. You oppress people by just simply being a Christian, by loving of everybody else, by loving the Lord your God. You're now oppressing other people. So if you're coming into our school and you're a Christian, we need to re-educate you. The school is now saying you must choose death if you want to be a part of our school. I cannot believe that we're dealing with that here in America, but we are. Life and death is before us. Church, it's time to wake up. Choose life. Keep God's commandments. Obey His commandments and follow His lead. I know that God sets up kings, even presidents. And we are to follow them until, until, They pit themselves against God and His Word. Then the question will come, who shall we follow now? We shall follow the Lord our God. Our government are, is doing things right now against God, against God's Word, and against His people. That includes you and I. So I'm, prayed, I'm praying that you're choosing life today, that you're following God's commands, you're obeying His commandments, keeping His statutes, and you're receiving life today. Let's not go down that road that leads to death. And that, that road that leads to death begins by allowing men to tell us what we should be and what we should think. I'm fearful for our, our, our school kids on, on all levels, from, from kindergarten, clear, from preschool clear up to college. I'm concerned for them because in our schools they're beginning to teach things that are against God's Word and what America stands for. Let's choose life today. God said it before us. He says, but if you turn away, but if your heart turns away, so you do not hear and, and you draw away and worship other gods and serve them, including man, then I'll announce to you today that you shall surely perish. We are living in dire times, people. It's time for us to prove who we are to the Lord by showing to the world 
that we truly love the Lord our God because we're obeying His commandments. We will have to choose for ourselves this day whom we will serve. Are we going to serve mere man or are we going to serve the one true God? I pray that you are serving the one true God today, that you're choosing life. There's this little word in the Bible, and I <clears throat> brushed across it this morning. It's that little word, if. If you obey my commandments, if you keep my statutes, then you will be blessed. But if, if you will not obey my commands, keep my statutes, then curses will come upon you. The choice is ours. The choice is life or death. I pray that we're choosing life. If you're if you're listening today and you want and you want to choose life, pray with me. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner in desperate need of salvation. Lord, I believe that you came to this world and you lived a perfect life and you died for my sins. You paid the penalty for my transgressions. Lord, I'm begging that you forgive me of my sins. I accept you, Lord Jesus, into my life, into my heart. And I'm asking that you take control of my life. That I would choose you every single day. Lord Jesus, have your way with me, I pray. In that precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, if you pray that today, tell somebody. Tell somebody what you've done. Get in the Word of God. And begin to study like you've never studied before. You have chosen life today. Don't go back to death. Continue to walk out your faith in Jesus Christ by obeying His commands. Hey, thanks for joining me this week. I pray that you draw closer to the Lord this week. You're going to need Him. I'm going to need Him. Draw closer to Him. And I pray that I see you next week.